see. It's a lazy Sunday afternoon. We got home from church. Liberty is fast asleep. And Easton is going to help me make this. So, welcome to my inch side of my house. So, uh, we got here a set of Zamberlin links with a BOA uh, lacing system. These are 44 and a half. I'm sorry, they, they say they're 44H in Euro and 10 in US men's sizes. Um, when you get it, you get a packet of boot care, all the stuff that's in there, Gore-Tex and Vibram. Um, get a little leather patch, boa thing, basically everything just saying it's in the boot. Um, so I'm gonna go over these boots real quick. I am going to compare them to the other Zamberlin links that I have had since 2016 and they finally are getting semi-retired. So, um, let's go over why I chose this particular boot. Um, I looked at Crispy's, I looked at um, Scarpa's, I looked at Hawthorne's, I looked at a bunch of different ones, um, but I've had the, the same Zamberlin boot with the lace-ups, and I cannot find enough good things to say about them. Um, First off, it's an eight inch boot, so that's good. Tens are slightly tall for me. Sixes are just, I, I most six inch boots I don't like. They're just right at my ankle and I don't like it. Eights where I like to be, uh, especially for the Rocky Mountains of Idaho where I am going to be. So, um, first thing I, I'm gonna say the differences are, this uh, toe rand right here, if it, doesn't come apart I'm gonna like it however with a lot of my work boots and um, other stuff like that the you know lineman boots and whatnot these toe rands tend to come apart quite a bit um, however if this stays intact I will like that and I'll kind of show you why here down the road um, so the boa laces obviously you push it in crank it up one-handed I, uh, I did this and wore these around the house for about an hour. And I'm making this uh, little video after that. Uh, these boots are going to take some time to break in. And because of that, you're not going to think these laces uh, get super tight. I, I like a, a very tight boot, a non-sliding boot uh, when I'm hiking. I wear ropers and cowboy boots all my life, so I'm used to that. But when I hike, I don't really want that. And uh, these lock you in. Um, they really do. So one of my big concerns was when I was first started looking at these at Sportsman's and other places was, well, how tight can I get this thing? You know, it's not a whole lot of leverage. Um, it's just a little knob. And then the durability of it. So... Um, when I found out that these are actually little steel cables with a kind of like a plastic coating on there, I um, was a lot more intrigued by it. Let's put it that way. Like, okay, a lot less likely to just annihilate itself and then you're out a shoelace kind of out in the middle of the woods. Um, so what I did was I put my foot in there. It took some getting in there because this brand new boot out of the box. The uh, once I got my foot in there, I adjusted this pretty much dead center of my shin as I could, and then to get it tight, I'm gonna try to do this one handed because I'm holding a phone here. To get it tight, I basically pulled up on this, and oh, it wasn't that one, I pulled up on this one and held my finger there, and then used my other hand to crank down the deal, and all this slack came out. And then that stayed really tight. After walking around for about 15 minutes, I tightened the top some more. And then I did another 15 minutes. Did the tops a little bit more. I got like maybe two, two more clicks out of there. Um, once that happened, 
I, I was good. It was super tight, which is what I was kind of looking for. I wanted to see how, one, how tight they can get, and two, um, just if it would stay that tight and kind of break the boot in super tight. So um, that's pretty close to where I'm going to wear it. So when I did that, after about an hour, I realized that I was cutting the circulation off to my feet. It was that tight. So if you're worried about getting these tight, uh, there are ways to do it. And when they break in, I think it's just going to get easier to do it. Um, so as of right now, I haven't even worn these outside yet, so I couldn't tell you. I will make a follow-up video after my elk hunt in September. Um, how how this whole boa setup did. I went with the boa for a couple of reasons. One, I was really curious about it. Two, um, laces in the morning in the dark are kind of a pain in the butt, but, you know, when is me. So I just went with the boa. I wanted to try it out. I thought it was a pretty cool... Uh, situation so I went there another difference is this uh, black here I don't know if you can see but it's a pretty abrasive very almost like a Kevlar -ish type texture to it so that's also new and uh, I think that's actually gonna help quite a bit it's sewn in right here so I can't get my finger under there you can see the stitching um, I think that's gonna be just fine and I'm sure it's for the friction here and the high friction area here so uh, the tread pattern is the exact same as the old ones as far as I remember. Um, and I'll show you why I just have to remember it here in a second. Um, pretty good. It has a very decent heel, which I, is important to me. I kind of depend on that heel to catch stuff and to catch me sometimes. So I love that heel. It's one of the main reasons why I didn't go with Krispies because Krispies don't generally tend to have enough heel for me in this application that um, they're a lot more flat, which is fine. But um, I don't know. I just, I tend to like a little bit of heel even on my hiking boot. Um, I can't remember the weight, but I remember picking these up at Sportsman's and I, it was the Crispy Thors, the orange ones um, that have the zigzag kind of pattern on them, black and orange. And I, these felt lighter to me and my daughter, who's eight. So um, not by much, but a little bit. But I would say they're fairly comparable, except that this is full grain leather. And the other one is uh, synthetic, which both have their benefits. I'm not going to get into that too much, but just uh, to give you a heads up there. So to compare these to the links from 2015... I call these my uh, hunting moccasins because of that. The uh, tread pattern is gone. The uh, boots are super worn. Um, I have put many, many miles on these. Uh, they kind of been rode hard, put away wet sometimes. Um, and hunted in these last year I, and the year before that. I mean, these have been what I hunt in and no it's not that much fun walking in the mountains with no tread on your boots so um, as you can see the laces here these are actually original laces so the laces that Zamberlin does give you at least in 2015 were great they do have um, there's one I think it must have been on my right foot broke but I tied it back together uh, but these are original laces as you can see, I got them really tight uh, in the toe box area. Um, and so that's pretty much where they like to live. Now, as you can see, the, the black here, there's no black in here. Same with here and here. Same height and everything. Um, and these used to look just like this without a toe ran. No toe ran here. So they that's what these will look like <laughs> being used and abused for what is that uh seven years now so um to give you guys a comparison here let's see here now this is the same you still have your little toe t or your heel tab thing there i have it here too um this is slightly different it looks like and it feels different so 
this is more of a suede right here. Uh, Suede-ish type leather. This is more of a pleather feeling, smoother. So we'll see if this holds up better or worse or whatever, but this did just fine. Um, I didn't notice anything when I put it on, like, oh, this is not comfortable or anything, but it is that way. So that's uh, the comparison of the other boot. These boots did phenomenal. For the first four or five years, they were just absolutely great. That's when the um, waterproofing started to break down slightly. Um, and I'm sure, as y'all can tell, there's... You know, a lot of that might be due to me and the lack of maintenance on my boots. You know, I got cracks. I got, um, they just been worked hard. Um, on my right boot here, I put a gaff right there. I don't know how or when, obviously climbing. So one thing that started happening a couple years ago is that the, uh, toes on the vibram soles here started coming off this one finally bit the dust checker hunting last year I remember that day so i just took a pocket knife and i kind of cut it where it lay and this one didn't quite need it but as you can see it's like fixing too quick so um they are resolvable, but i chose not to do that mainly just because of the waterproofing was compromising these i still might get these uh resold as a backup pair so there's that also i believe i could be mistaken i cannot find a tag or read the tag in these anymore i believe these i got these in a nine and a half us and these in 10 but they're both the regular e width in european sizing which is slightly narrow for american sizing so i was debating on going with a wide on this newer one um, but I didn't, and I didn't because of two things. One, I figured they slightly stretch. Um, these, I like the way these fit, uh, especially after the break-in period on the width. Uh, there's no sliding side to side on for the side hilling. But the main thing is for me, the main reason why I love these boots so much, uh, well, one of them is the arch support. The arch support is crucial for me because I do have pretty decent sized arches in my feet, um, which is another reason why I really didn't go with Crispies because they did seem to be a lot more of a flat foot uh, type boot, if you know what I mean. Um, you can get different insoles in Crispies or any boot really uh, to compensate that, but I just knew I liked these arches in both these sets and they do feel really good. Uh, the arches, or I'm sorry, the insoles on these lasted several years. Now, you probably can't see it in there, but I have um, one sole art, high arch cork insoles, I think, from REI. And they did pretty good. I, I didn't mind them too much. So there's that. Uh, but I just want to give you guys a kind of slight rundown on um, the differences between the lace-ups from seven years ago and the BOA um, situation here. If anybody's got more questions about the BOA, I can definitely try and answer those for you. When I did cinch these down and they were tight, I was, they didn't, they weren't anywhere near as tight as this. Like, see how far it is from here to here? They weren't that far apart or that close. They were probably about a quarter inch more than this. So that um, is neither here nor there, but that's what I'm kind of saying. The, the boas are, can get tight. They just get tight in a slightly different way. Um, I'm, I can pretty much already foresee these being super easy to tighten up once broken in and all that. So I might wear them to work for a day or two or definitely around the house a little bit more today and some other stuff. But I'm um, looking forward to these. Uh, same thing. Um, these have a uh, Gore-Tex decal there. These are also Gore-Tex. And um, I do remember the waterproofing of these boots was some of the best I've ever had. 
um, in a hunting boot, Danners, uh, Mendels or Mendels, um, they, they, I would say these were better or longer lasting for sure than all those. Um, the dryer, drying of these boots, if you do get them wet, you sweat in them or water goes down your sock or whatever it might be. I have a Poots, uh, a Pete's, um, boot dryer and I've never had an issue with that setup. That's how I usually dry all my boots. But yeah, no, I'm looking forward to these. Um, they should do really well and I will get you a uh, comeback or uh, elk hunting review once I go out. But I'll probably bring these and these just in case I do fall on a creek or whatever. And these are gonna be wet for a day or two. I will wear these. I mean, I was gonna wear them if I didn't get these. So <laughs> there's that. Always take a second pair of boots, especially if you're uh, truck camping, So, which is what I'm going to be doing. Anyways, uh, if y'all you got, got any questions, uh, let me know, and we'll go from there, and I'll make keep a heads up for a follow-up review. Say bye, Liberty. Bye. Say, say bye, Lily Me. <laughs>